Okay, welcome you guys. Um, I want to introduce you to my friend Kaylee King. Hello. <laughs> um, Kaylee is currently a qualifying team elite for NewSkin, which is in the top 1% of the company. And she's joining us today to talk about her experience working in direct sales um, and doing it remotely, of course. So hi, Kaylee. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yes, of course. You have been with New Skin for just a little over two years, and you have already worked your way up into the top one, qualifying top 1% of the company, which is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. So before you did this, you were a teacher, which is very different from doing direct sales, <laughs> very different yes. skills. So can you talk a little bit about um, your motivation to tr transition out of doing full-time teaching to do this? Um, and what that kind of looked like for you. Yeah, so we actually um, used to live in Texas. We currently live in Kentucky and we moved here because of my husband's job. So I had been a teacher for 13 years in Texas and then we found out we were moving and I thought I would go through the process of getting certified to teach in our new state. Um, and that proved to be a little more difficult than I was expecting it to be. And I was gonna have to go back and get um, some different hours in uh, my master's degree and things just were not coming easily. And so we just decided, you know what, let's see what else is out there. And I had had a friend who was actually from Texas who I taught with and she had been successful with this business. And when all of this kind of started happening, I thought, you know what, I think I can do this. I post on social media already. I feel like I'm a very social person. Um, and we just decided that I would go for it. So I think for, for me, it was just that transition of moving and things just kind of not working out the way I had planned and wanting to try something new. Um, and I had been using some of the products already and really loved them. So I thought, why not? <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> um, so what were some of those, or did you find that there were some transferable skills from your teaching experience? Cause it sounds like you had quite a bit. Um, and then were there any new skills that you really had to learn and there was a learning curve to doing it? Yeah. So I always joke because I taught middle school students. Um, I taught eighth graders for the majority of my time teaching. And, you know, if you're a teacher, you have to be organized. And so I do feel like being organized was something that I was able to bring across with me into this new career. Um, but what I think <laughs> was very different is I always say it's really easy for me to talk to 12 year olds and 13 year olds all day long and like teach <laughs> them and, and have them understand things. But for me to, um, a big part of this business is growing a team. And for me to then take those teaching skills from eighth graders to adults <laughs> is definitely different. Um, but something that, um, you know, you just learn and you figure out and I feel like I've gotten a whole lot better at it. Um, but I think definitely being organized and having a system in place and kind of a schedule that you follow are some things that I definitely brought with me um, from my teaching career into direct sales. So, and is there anything that like a new skill that you use now that you absolutely love that you wouldn't have like ever gotten to do teaching. I guess having a managing a team is one of them, but something yeah. that maybe you just didn't even know that you liked doing. Yeah. So I actually really like public speaking now and I <laughs> never would have yeah. said that before. Um, I don't do it all the time. And a lot of it is virtual, you know, whether it's a zoom call or a Facebook live training. Um, but when we do get together and have our conferences and our success camps and our boot camps, um, I've been asked several times to speak on stage and I actually get excited about it now instead yeah. of being like, Oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I, so I'm really actually thankful for that because I feel yeah. like that's a big, a big thing that a lot of people stress over or would like to be able to do and never think that they will. So, well, and I think your teaching probably helps with that too, because the very minimum you're used to getting in front of a group of students, like 30 students. 
yeah. so a much larger scale, different topics, but having like knowing how to prepare to mm -hmm. speak, like having kind of your notes and your organization and doing it kind of on the fly. I think that probably all, that's a really great transferable skill to a different platform. Yeah. And I feel like if I ever ended up doing anything else, it would be a skill that I could then take with me too. So so transitioning a little bit into the company of New Skin, um, we haven't really introduced it. Do you want to kind of talk about what it is first? Yeah. So New Skin um, was founded in 1984. It's a health and wellness and beauty company. Um, they started out of Provo, Utah, and have just grown to over 50 markets worldwide, which I think is amazing. Um, they are a debt-free, publicly traded company. Um, and honestly, I started because I like their products so much. And I think that the customers like the product so much. I love that it's a consumable product. People keep coming back for more. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. I mean, and I definitely have like, I've tried a few things that I didn't care for, but then I've sure. like found my favorites and I'm like, yeah, this is what I yeah, we this always say, thing. I'm probably going to butcher this, but we always say we have something for everyone, but not everything is for everyone. Mm -hmm. Did I say yeah, that right? Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and we have over 350 or 250 products. So, and it's everything from skincare to, you know, health and wellness, supplements, um, all kinds. So men and women, children, adults, teenagers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really a, a huge variety of things. Mm -hmm. And so New Skin uh, would fall into sort of like the MLM or multi-level marketing niche. Um, and it's really gotten like a really bad rep over the last handful of years from other companies um, and just people online. So for people who are just like anti-MLM, like won't even be like, absolutely not. <laughs> like what has been your experience with that and what would you say to those types of people with you know new skin specifically so in my experience in the last two plus years that i've been doing this is that most of the time people have these preconceived notions that are actually false um not every direct sales company is created equally um and so i think that you know, a lot of times if they think they know something about one company, then it must be the same about another company. A lot of times I will tell people, well, just go do your homework on it and go do a little bit of research on it and look it up. Um, I always say new skin is so great because they are publicly traded. So that means any financial claims, all of their numbers, everything is, is, is out there public for, for everyone to see. Um, and because of that, it's all very closely regulated. And so sometimes when there's private companies, you're not going to see that, you know, they don't have that accountability. Um, and I just think that they're probably, I mean, I don't really want to talk negatively about a company, but there probably are companies out there who may not be as reputable, I guess I could say. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of brand new MLM companies mm -hmm. out there who don't have the history and the standing that New Skin does. Um, and that's just one of the things that I love about ours. It has been around for what now? Almost 35 plus years. Mm -hmm. So that just speaks volumes to me. Yeah, I agree. Kind of moving back towards your experience with working in the company, um, moving from teaching where you had well, theoretically set hours. I know teachers work way more hours than their actual classroom time. Yes. Um, but you had, you know, you would go to school and then you would come home and you kind of were able to separate that. Doing social market or network marketing and being online all the time, how do you, um, and you have a family, how do you keep those work-life balances so that you're not just working like 24 seven? Um, and do you have any like, well, I'll ask that question in a section in a second, <laughs> but go ahead. What is your like work-life balance tips? Yeah, so it definitely was a transition because even though teachers do work a lot outside of the classroom or school hours, um, you do have those defined hours. And in a job or a position like this, there are none <laughs> ever. So um, I think that I went into it 
feeling like it was going to be way different than it actually was for me. I was thinking I'm going to have all this time and it's going to be so easy. And actually, you know, I feel like my day goes by faster um, or it did go by faster when I first started this business and I wasn't accomplishing the things I wanted to accomplish because I wasn't structured and I had been um, structured for so long being in education. So for me, I really had to learn um, how to kind of time block or set office hours for myself and for my business um, and for all the things that come along with that, whether it be me working with my customers, me building my product group page on Facebook, or me having coaching calls with my team. Um, so for me, I just found that setting those hours and sticking to them and finding a schedule that I could put myself on um, was what worked because it's real easy to fall into that hole of, you know, spending what for us, what we like to spend as quality time with our family in the evenings um, on my phone working or in my mm -hmm. office working. So just sticking to a schedule, finding a schedule that works and kind of setting office hours, uh, has been what works for me. And how do you manage sort of the social media part of it? Do you set timers on your phone when you're working or when you're doing social things? Like how is that, have you been able to separate those at all? Or are you just kind of okay with it blending? Um, so in the beginning, I definitely would set timers because I would, you know, have certain things I wanted to accomplish. And so I would have different times throughout the day that I would do those. Now that I've kind of gotten into a rhythm and I know what I'm doing, I don't necessarily do that anymore. Um, I have a, a school aged child and a husband who works, actually he works from home as well. Um, and so when he is at school, when Everett is at school and um, I'm at home, it's very easy for me to get a lot done. I know that's not the case for moms with little kids who are at home, but for me, that's what works. And so I try to do all of like the business side of things during those hours um, and then focus on after school hours with my son and my husband and dinner. And then I will sometimes later in the evenings come back and do zoom calls or trainings or customer type type stuff. But I do try to get a, the most of it done while he's at school. Mm -hmm. so yeah. And that's been challenging for a lot of people with school, not in <laughs> for most of 2020 so yes. far. Yes. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's another thing too. I, I, it has been very different for a lot of people this, this past year. I was lucky in that my child is older. He's in middle school. So he's a little more self, efficient and yeah. on his own. I'm not having to like make his lunch or those kinds of things, but I could definitely see how it would be transition year for sure. <laughs> yeah. And you said something that I really loved. You, you said my business. And I think that transition, especially for people who've worked for a company and now they are starting their own business. I know I've struggled with it, really owning it as like my business and what that means. Do you remember that mindset shift that you had to have to get there or like what that kind of looked for you? Yeah. So I would probably say about a year into this journey, I kind of came to a stall where I just didn't really know, like, are we going to go big with this? Or are we going to be happy where I'm at? Do I want more? Um, and I did just kind of realize it was last fall you know, like I am, I am capable of this and it is truly my business and I am going to get out of it what I put into it. So I can choose to put in part-time work and get part-time pay back, or I can put in full-time work and get a full-time compensation back. And so I think deciding that I wanted full-time and I wanted more for my family really made me take ownership of what I've created with my team as it really being my business and something mm -hmm. that I, not that I'm in charge of my team, but something that I'm in charge of um, helping to flourish and to have growth. Yeah. And your team looks to you a lot. So like that is a really big part of your job. Okay. And I think that I can imagine I'm a little different, but I imagine coming from like a teacher background, you are already in that service industry. It's like, this is another way that you get to serve just a lot more people really yeah. and on different levels. 
Yeah. Yeah. So there, there was definitely much reward with students and, and being a teacher in education. Um, it's, it's, I don't, don't want to say it's better here, but it's a different kind of reward. It's so rewarding to see peers of mine, friends of mine that have started this business and grown in this business start to see what a gift it has been to them and to their families and how it's given them this is like, you know, time freedom, like a cliche term, but it's mm -hmm. true. Are we still working a lot? Yes. You know, as much as I did as a teacher, yes, but it's on my schedule. It's on what works for my family. And that's when you, when you're seeing your, your friends and your teammates be able to do that and be able to have more time with their children or more time to go places with their spouse or more time to just do the things they want to do. That's rewarding because they're, they're more happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think everyone has to decide what it is. Like, do you want to spend more time with your family? Do you want to travel more? Do you want to have more time to volunteer? Like, you know, what, whatever it is, their personal drive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think it takes for someone to actually be successful in network marketing? Um, the number one thing I would say is that they are consistent. Um, if you're not consistent, if you're doing a little bit here and a little bit there and just whenever it works for me, then you're not going to see the payoff as if you were consistent, you know, on a regular basis. So I think consistency is huge. I think um, another one is not being able or not being afraid to take a chance on something that might not be in your comfort zone. Uh, just like I talked about earlier, the first time I was asked to speak on stage, I was very uncomfortable, but now I look forward to it. And so I think being willing to take a chance or being willing to do something outside of what you might normally do um, is a huge one. But I would definitely say just the consistency and sticking with the plan and sticking with what your leaders are telling you works. Um, because there's really no need to go reinvent the wheel. If yeah. you already have a system in place for your group that works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, why go do something different when it's like, hey, we have a, yeah. have a format for you. Yeah. That's no. kind of anything. In it's like, why go yeah. off the path? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to add to that. Um, so consistency and then also being coachable. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's hard to take constructive criticism um, especially coming from a peer, but you know, uh, it's not out of spite or out of any kind of ill will. It's them wanting you to have the success that they know you're capable of. And so mm -hmm. being coachable and taking the advice and actually applying it, that's huge. I think those are really good, like just life skills to have in general, like be consistent, especially if we're gonna have an online business, but like be consistent, show up, learn as much as you can, be coachable, and mm -hmm. be willing to take the action at the end of the day. Yeah, it's so true. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think, I think that this is, uh, and I may be jumping the gun into your next question, but this okay. is, this is something that I think anybody can do, whether you are already active on social media, whether you're not active on social media very much, just here and there. Um, whether you're a people person or not a people person, I think honestly, no matter where you're starting, you can grow to be successful in this business. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else you wanted to share? Just to sort of like what you, you know, maybe what you love about working remotely or something that maybe we didn't cover that you. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I, that I love. So obviously as a teacher, I had the summers off, um, but that was a short time out of mm -hmm. the year. And in the summers, we still had professional developments and things that we had mm -hmm. to do. Um, so, you know, if things were happening in my life that I wanted to be able to travel and go experience or family, I wanted to go visit or a wedding or a funeral or whatever, I had very limited time that I could take off from August to really June, right? And so um, we are about to, on Sunday, actually leave to go visit family in Texas, and we're going to be gone for three weeks. And every time <laughs> that we go travel or do something like that, 
it really just is so impactful to me because my business doesn't have to stop. I don't have to ask for time off. The income that's coming in doesn't have to skip a beat. And it's just so rewarding to be able to, especially now that we live so far away, yeah, go spend, you know, a good chunk of time with family. And um, if you can find yourself something that you can do that allows you that time freedom and the ability to travel, um, I would encourage you to do it. Yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I know you would say the same. <laughs> Uh, that's exactly what I did. I mean, I talked about travel every day as a study abroad advisor. I went nowhere. I got to, didn't have time to travel because I was helping other students do it. And so, yeah, I quit so that I built something for myself that allowed me to do the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. So yeah, totally agree. Yeah. And where can people find you online? So on Instagram, it is at we three Kings and things. I know it's a lot. <laughs> um, and I also have a Facebook page um, or a group with the same name. So perfect. I will put those links in the description below. Um, thank you so much for being here, Kaylee. Yeah. I appreciate it. And I hope you guys found some inspiration from that. Um, whatever it is that you choose to do, there's always, you can always use transferable skills. And as long as you're willing to learn and get out of your comfort zone, you can make anything happen. So thanks so much for joining us. My name is Taylor and my channel is Traveling Taylor and I'm here every Tuesday. So I'll see you next week. <laughs>